What's going on? What are you reading? The godlike being of immense power, known only as the Emperor, right, uniting the warring factions of Earth and embarking on the great crusade. Right. 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 So he did this by creating 20 legions. <laughs> All right, and welcome to the first episode of Completion Art, where we will be t- discussing and reviewing today uh, Warhammer 40K's first novel in a series of many novels, um, Horus Rising. Uh, now, the way this is going to work, for those who don't know, is I'm just going to do a quick summary, uh, very short, about what I think the pros and cons of the book are and whether you should read it. And after that, we're going to go into spoilers, and I will warn you first, so don't worry about it. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. For those of you who don't know, Warhammer 40k is a huge universe full of lore. Um, it's kind of a steampunk future full of uh, mechanic cyber guys. Uh, wearing tons of armor, uh, incredibly testosterone-driven, around uh, exploring and dominating the universe. It revolves around a lot of different things, but here specifically we're actually in the year 30,000, where uh, a god emperor is slowly spanning across the universe, blowing his load on every planet he comes by, and trying to unify the universe against the greater threat. This is the first book, Horus Rising, that is, is the first book uh, of many. So already, if you're not interested in a multi-part series, I wouldn't suggest this. There are more than 40 books, apparently, of which I don't think you need to read all of them. That being said, it would be, you know, I guess it's more useful the more you read. Uh, I haven't read them, so this is coming from the perspective of someone who's only read the single book. For different books and different series, I'm going to use different metrics of evaluation that I'm going to base on what I think is important for that particular series or what the author slash creators were trying to get out of it. So uh, in terms of uh, Horus Rising, I'm going to try and base this off of uh, four different points. The story itself of uh, the book, the lore uh, uh, of the universe, the characters, and then the writing. Uh, Some of those might interlap but I'm going to try and make them as uh, clear as possible. This is also my first one, and I'm not going to go too hard on myself or the book uh, as I'm trying to figure out the format. So uh, it's always appreciated if you let me know what you think works, what you think doesn't, so that I can hash this all out in the future. But before that, let's get into what Horus Rising is actually about. Horus Rising primarily focuses on Garviel Loken. He is the captain of the 10th company of the Luna Wolves. They are uh, under the leadership of the War Master of the Great Crusade, who could, for all intents and purposes, be considered the second in command of the Bulky Men Brigade. Uh, and uh, Loken is, I guess, I don't know, three steps down, uh, uh, probably more than three steps, but roughly, as far as you're aware, three steps down on the uh, totem pole. And you're following him through the beginnings of what I'm assuming is going to be a greater um, kind of seeding of. Uh, brotherhood and betrayal i guess uh this is definitely a hyper masculine uh boys club brigade and uh although it's a lot of fun um i'm gonna guess this is more of a male oriented book because most of the themes are related to brotherhood as they galliband across the universe sucking each other off and killing different species and mastering every fucking planet they can find uh, if it wasn't uh, if it wasn't masculine enough as it was, then you're gonna see things like a planet called Murder and be like, oh well, here we go. I like to listen to music when I watch these or read these rather, and of course I was listening to Opeth, some fucking heavy metal, the entire way through this book because I don't think anything else would do. In terms of the story, it's not too bad, but I don't have a complete picture, so it's hard to discuss it too thoroughly, as this is obviously a multi-part series. You are going to find uh, that you don't get that much information, that a lot is left bare, but what is there is interesting and leaves you wanting to know more, and you're going to enjoy that. So I would... uh, I would say the story overall is good, but it could be better uh, in that obviously this isn't a very good standalone book because it's just almost the first chapter of many, many other books. So like I said before, if you are looking for a single series of heavy metal badassery, although this will satiate your 
need for murder and death and face stomping, it will not satiate you in a story sense because you're you're just going to get blue balled waiting for the next four books. And by waiting, I really just mean getting to reading because they have all been released as far as I'm aware. First up is the story. Now, obviously, I can't get into the story, although I can say it was very interesting and definitely made me want to get started with the second book. Uh, so I would say as far as a multi-series story is involved, uh, this is the first chapter, so I can't speak too heavily about it, although uh, it did leave me wanting to read the second book, which I think it was the goal of this book, and it did a pretty good job of it. But that brings us more into an important part, which is lore. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are aware that the Warhammer series is a rich, deep uh, lore universe uh, spanning from video games to TV shows to these books to just about everything under the sun that they can slap that fucking brand on, they're going to be doing. So uh, I would say that in terms of lore, it's probably an 11 out of 10. If you're really into deep universes with tons of characters spanning thousands of years, you're not going to find anything deeper than this. Uh, if the story and heavy metal type stuff and gritty gritty war um, lore is your thing, then this is really as deep a dive as you could go into in almost any series. So I would highly suggest it. Uh, it, it. It encompasses quite a few thousand years, quite a few thousand characters, I'm sure. Um, and that brings us to the next subject, which is characters. As I said, the story is following uh, our primary character Captain Loken uh, who is definitely a badass and I would say although the characters are all very unique and interesting um, because of the names and the size of the universe it can get a little bit mixing and confusing so you're definitely going to want to keep track of all the characters that you're going through because it will uh, become a lot and uh, because of the fact that they're all kind of juice heads together uh, a little bit can bleed here there and everywhere and you might need to be reminded of a few things so keeping track of your characters might be useful at the beginning of the first book and in terms of the writing uh we're looking at a well-written book uh this series it's no mystery is written by tons of different people because there's too many books for one person to write by himself so you're going to be getting a little bit of a different drive i have started the second book and i haven't finished it but you definitely can tell a difference in terms of diction and writing from them and candor so uh you are going to be getting a bit of different writing per every book but as far as the writing was concerned in this book it was really um well done uh the visualization was great and i had a fun time picturing everything in my head and i don't think i had a difficult time following the flow was very well done and i was able to get a, a sense of the scale of all the uh action happening at all times and a good orientation of ev all the action and the characters and stuff in the scene so i never felt like i was um not sure where the person was in rel relation of everybody else so i think in total that was pretty well done which i think especially for a story with lots of action where you're kind of going on a play-by-play -play of what's happening with you know gunshots and characters and you know the space around you which is very relevant it was done in a in a a fairly it wasn't done in a way that made you feel like you were being held by the hand but it felt left me feeling satisfied and wanting more the action was gory uh, badass and uh, certainly fraught with lots of very heavy words and kind of brutal connotations so if you're if you're into that sort of stuff and you like listening to metal then i think you're going to have a fun time reading this book so overall i would say if your genre is more heavy kind of brutal badass brotherly kind of war stuff this is definitely a book for you um and also if you're really into a longer type series this is definitely not a series to start without the expectation of reading at least four or five books from my understanding, so I really wouldn't suggest going into this feeling satisfied after one book. This is a tough journey, um, and I might suggest this as your uh, offhand book. Uh, that is to say, um, you know, if you have a lot of books you're trying to read, uh, maybe this is a good book and, you know, read one of these, then read a few other books and then get into the second part and read a few books and get into the third part and read a few books because there's a lot to go and I, I wouldn't want to dive just into this series by itself. I would say overall, I'm not really big on rating things, but I would say overall, this is a six and a half out of ten. Uh, I might stop rating things in the future or start depending on what people think. Uh, uh, 
as far as a six and a half, I don't mean that as a bad thing. I would say this is good candy reading. Um, there are certainly other books that uh, have a stronger package in terms of story um, and characters and uh, emotionally driven narrative. Um, but in terms of like a good gory read, this was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it in the same way that I enjoy something like uh, Tokyo Drift. But except the lore of Fast and the Furious is complete garbage. And I would say the lore is probably one of the best parts of the Warhammer universe. So I feel like I'm involving myself in a much deeper universe that's a lot of fun to read. And um, I think everyone will have a lot of fun if you're, if you're really into lore and... and uh, a grittier universe then this is definitely a big sell for you um i would say if you're really into lore and gritty stuff this might i might bump this up to a seven and a half or an eight out of ten for you um but i also think this is kind of the introduction laying out a little bit of groundwork for people reading the book so uh, i might rate the future books or the series as a whole in terms of like the first five novels uh, higher once i get to them uh, that's how it's been explained to me. So uh, overall, I, I would say this is definitely something I would suggest to people if, if this t sounds like your type of uh, jam. Uh, I probably wouldn't suggest this to most uh, girls. I don't know. I'm not trying to be uh, sexist here, but uh, this is definitely a fucking bromance uh, in terms of like, you know, like this is would be essentially Navy SEALs in space. So, uh, yeah, if that's your jam, guy or girl, slap yourself in there, folks. Uh, enjoy yourself. And that concludes the spoiler-free area. Um, the spoiler area, so I'm starting now. If you haven't read these and you don't want me to spoil anything, um, this is where I would stop listening. Go read the book. Uh, three, two, one. I don't have too much to talk about in the spoiler-free area for this, uh, just because it's been a, a, a few months since I've read it, and unfortunately I... Um, I didn't prepare as well for this. I just really would like to get the first one out just to get the vibe for how I'm going to do these and get some advice on it. I know not too many people are going to see this anyways. That being said, um, man, once they got to the fucking planet murder with the spiders, I was sold. Uh, I thought that was probably the coolest chapter of the book, fucking up those spiders and stuff like that. Um, I don't know much about the universe, and it's tough diving into this because um, I don't want to look up kind of certain topics and have the future book spoiled because uh, so, <laughs> that wouldn't be fun for me and I want this to be fun for me and not feel like a job um, but man the fucking warp that was fucked up uh, that guy blowing up to bits and shit like that uh, I'm excited to see more about that in the future um, uh, like obviously based on the fucking name of the books and everything it's pretty clear that Horace is going to get a big boner for himself and want to kind of claim and you know, claim himself as the God Emperor maybe or something around those uh, vibes and you can tell Loken's a pretty cut and dry guy um, in terms of him not joining the uh, the Brotherhood of Dick Sucking uh, you know in the Bohemian Grove so I I'm really curious what's going to happen because Loken has a lot of uh, honor and he's really stands by his beliefs so the fact that he said no to that i'm not really sure whether that means he's going to stand beside um horus or he's going to stand beside the god emperor himself so I, I think that's pretty fucking cool man uh, i'm pretty excited to see the rest which is why i'm reading the next one right now so hopefully we'll get more into that but uh I don't want to get too deep into this because I know as soon as I look up more stuff on Loken, I'm going to accidentally read too far past Horus Heresy and it's going to spoil it for me. It seems that I, I'm just very, I'm very interested. Things I'm really interested in are how, how quickly the seeds of, uh, seeds of not deception, but the seeds of kind of, uh, backstabbing are going to get put through and how, and what side Loken's going to pick. Cause uh, obviously he's the main character of this series. Uh, and, uh, I'm really interested to see where his honor takes him. So that's going to be pretty cool. Otherwise, I think this is a pretty good book. Um, I really like Malagurst. He was pretty fucking cool. I always love the idea of people who are playing 4D chess. So I think he's a really badass character. Um, that's obviously going to have lots of implications in the future. I'm just looking forward to seeing uh, where the factions split up and what happens. So, yeah, that's about it. Uh, hopefully this wasn't too bad to listen to and people aren't fucking having a nightmare trying to figure out what I'm saying. Uh, but, yeah, I'm currently reading through... Uh, what's the... Uh, I, don't, it's a, I don't know which one I'm reading right now. Father God? Godfather? Um, <laughs> uh, no. What's it called? I'm going to look it up now before I leave. 
so that people know what this is. I guess people will just look it up just like I did. But, uh, yeah, so uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. And if you didn't, I'm really sorry. And, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get her done. Uh, thanks for listening. Make sure to uh, subscribe and hit your notification bell if you'd like to listen to more of this in the future. Uh, or let me know in the comments what you thought worked and what didn't in this. I'm, I'm really looking for some advice on, on what people are looking for in terms of hearing about uh, content for new books and stuff like that. Because I want this to be interesting and be a conversation. I want to know what you guys think of the series. Uh, yeah. So thanks for listening and you have a great day. Go read a book. Any book. <laughs>